shy spell, he might actually be saved. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I told you, I made the Holy Ghost never gets to do. He has to cut loose and preach a sermon in before I preach, he can preach a sermon in. And preach a full sermon, I'll sit down and have it. If God's in it, I'm going to sit back and see what takes place. I'm going to be a part of it. I ain't going to sit back. I'll be a part of it. Amen. Good to have everybody here this morning. Glad to have yes, business with us. Awesome. We are going to go into phase four this morning. I started about three or four weeks back from the Ford Motor Company. You pretty sure you get the ideas from strange places. But, uh, oh, yeah. It works, though. They have the Edge, they have the, edge, the uh, Escape, the Explorer. This morning we're on the Expedition. Amen. And we're getting all the crowd up. As I get to the scripture this morning, I can almost hear Joshua and Caleb screaming this out at this time, although this is not what it's talking about. But find Isaiah chapter 53, and verse 1. As we begin to go into the anointing of the power and the joy that God wants us to have, as we begin to see how His anointing begins to break down the bondages and the yokes of places that are around us. Isaiah chapter 53, 5 3, and verse 1. Again, I apologize for the air this morning. David's going to take Greg out behind the woodshed when he gets back to work Monday morning. They came in here last Sunday. We went, uh, it got, uh, started out at 70. It was 77 degrees in the church before we left out. And uh, they came over here and regassed it up. And <clears throat> somebody forgot to plug in the electrical part outside. And I thought this morning somebody was playing games was just trying to make the church hot. So the reason it's a little bit hotter this morning is because it didn't get turned on until we got here. But it has already dropped three degrees in here, so and the community is down. But just bear with us. This was my been meant to try to stop. So we're all right. We're going to make it happen anyway. Amen. God's here, and He's going to make the difference. Are you ready this morning? Yes, As Isaiah starts to read this first verse, we're going to go on through a little bit later on. This first verse. And again, can you almost picture we have the children of Israel? All the 12 spies just came back and began to tell our bad stories. That's what the explorers was last week. But can you almost imagine them as they begin to cry out, says, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Who hath believed our report? I asked you last week, do you know what there's an explorer, exploring and an expedition is? I told you I'd tell you this week. The explorer goes out and they search in new areas. They come back and they bring the evidence back. Usually, as kids, we go out in the creeks, we pull up the rocks looking for crawfish, crawdads, whatever you want to call them, minnows, whatever. We go out exploring. We go through the woods and we try to find pine cones and rocks that look like arrowheads. And we were exploring what was around us. As we've explored God's greatness, now we come back and we report it. And who hath believed our report? So the next avenue you do is you mount up an expedition. An expedition, you go out and it's it's funded by somebody usually, but you have a mismatch of people going because you want evidentiary proof when you come back. One of them is a reporter, a recorder, whatever. He writes everything down that takes place. And you've got those that are the scientific community. They want to make sure all the readings is right. You've got those that are just, that are the guys that take them where they're supposed to go. And you've got the workers that are carrying the everything. All this, we're taking a group of people on a journey. This expedition is a fact-finding expedition. We're searching for something. We're going to prove what the explorers found. They found <laughs> grapes so big it took two men to carry back one cluster. They found pigs. They found pomegranates, but they also found giants. And that scared them. And Caleb and Joshua are crying out, 
Who hath believed our report? There's something about understanding and believing what has been wrote down and what has been taken care of is God's people have to believe His report. This report is talking about, actually talking about salvation. I want you to understand we are on an expedition to find out all we can about Jesus. Amen. We want to learn so much of Him and be so much like Him and have a desire in our heart to understand His desires and His wants. And we just want to be just like Him. That's what a Christian is. Is Christ-like. But as they mount up this journey, the first thing we have to have is a funding process, don't we? So they start out searching. They say, well, you can give to this expedition. We're going to go out and find some things. We want to find out some truths where we're headed for. And they begin to collect funds and get everything lined up and everything ready to go and they get the right amount of funds. And they get all their supplies ready. And they get ready and said, ah, our journey's beginning. Our journey is fixed to take place from this point on. I got, can I tell you that the journey's already been paid for? That's right. Can I tell you that no matter what you might think that you owe, God has paid the journey? Amen. This truth journey that we're on, God has paid it in full. You don't have to go out and try to come up with anything new. You can't do nothing to earn His grace. You can't say anything out of the way to and they think, no matter how many times you say hallelujah or glory or jump up and down or shout, you can't earn the grace of God. It's been paid for in full. Amen. So this expedition, we're on it. by the way, we're on an expedition for truth. I'll get to that in a few minutes. This expedition has been paid for in full. And he's went out and he's pulled people from all walks of life. You see, when Jesus started his ministry, he didn't get his trade as a carpenter. He didn't get a bunch of carpenters to walk with him, did he? He didn't want everybody to be into the same mind and the same thought and everything else. He didn't want a bunch of carpenters walking around with him. They could talk shop all the time. Yeah, we cut that board at 25 and 3 sixteenths, and it fit perfectly. We cut it in eight, it wouldn't have worked. We cut it five sixteenths. It wouldn't work. We cut it exactly like we were supposed to put. And I'm going to tell you what. He's got so good now. He can take that hammer, hit that nail twice, that sixteenth inch nail, and it's sunk. But not like what he done. He got people of diverse situations. He brought fishers in, fishermen in there. He even brought a tax collector in there. That sorry low life wasn't worth shooting. <laughs> he was thieving. He was robbing. He was stealing from people. But God said, "Come on, I want you to go with me." We're going somewhere. We're going on an expedition. Uh, it's a fact-finding mission. You're going to find out who I am, what I am, and what I'm about. Amen. And they walked this earth under His authority and under His power with Him for three and a half years. And they come to a point where, there, where David was at this morning. I was, I was also in the first chapter of Acts this morning too. I'm going back there for just a minute. Jesus is looking up. As he began to look up and talk to the people, he made this statement. As Paul, as Luke was writing this, I'm going to start in Moses heart verse 2, the first chapter. So until the day that he was taken up, after he had, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments to the apostles to whom he had chosen, to whom he showed himself alive after his passion by them forty days, speaking them things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Being assembled together, he commanded them they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which you have heard, which he saith, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye should be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And when they were therefore come together, they asked, Will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? Will you bring peace back to our country? Is it time of peace right now? You're here and you're, you're, you've done what all you stood. Is it time that it's grace had just begun on this expedition of grace? He said to them, It is not known for you to know the seasons, the times, or the seasons that the Father put his own power. But you shall receive the Holy Ghost. You shall receive power the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnessed to me both in Jerusalem and Judea, the utmost parts of the earth. 
as he was speaking, and when he had spoken, these things he beheld, he was taken up. A cloud received him out of his sight. All these people that over the years, these three years, had walked with him. They'd seen him go up to the lepers as they came up to him and said, I will be thou clean. And they all left clean. They had seen countless times where this one came up blind and left seeing, where this one came up deaf and left hearing, where the sick with palsy was getting up and carrying their bed and going back to their house, showing the world, look what he has done for me. They had seen all these things. They had a report going in their mind. They knew what they knew what they knew. And they wrote down in a record of what's going on. And they began to tell this whole world what was going on. How can you not believe the report that Jesus Christ came, born of a virgin, washed in the river Jordan by John as he baptized him? Maybe washed wasn't a good word, but you know what I'm trying to say. The time that he rose up, he went in and his ministry began. The time that he touched all the lives, as they walked with him, as they seen when a woman came up in the crowd and just touched the hem of his garment. As they'd seen where he stood up on the mountain and said, Lazarus, come forth. And death had to obey him. Amen. They'd seen all these things. And he, they had a report going in their mind. They had kept record of it. They knew who he was. He'd ask him, he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. I know who you are. I believe your report. Can you believe his report this morning? Amen. That when he died on Calvary's tree, he paid a price that we couldn't pay. He made an effort to stand up and say, I made a way for you to come into my presence. Amen. All the blood of bulls and goats and heifers and turtle doves and scapegoats, all these things could not bring you into my presence. Amen. But the blood I'm shedding on Calvary, the blood that poured out of my body while I was hanging on that cross, when they shoved the spear in my side and forth became blood and water, all that was shed for your salvation. Can you believe that report? Amen. Can you believe it with all? Can you understand the reality of the truth that that's the only way? Amen. People today will try to tell you there's other ways into heaven. There's only one way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man enter into the Father except by me. So he's paid the price. The expedition that we're on is that of following in the footsteps He set before us to do. We're an expedition of truth. We want to find the truth. We want to live in the truth. We want to see what God is going to expound to us every day that we send forth. We can't live in a lie. We can't live understanding what it is. And two of the greatest lies, I guess, going out in the Christian world today And I, God's not going to bring any judgment. We're just going to have a time of peace and joy and everything's going to be hunky-dory. We're going to be sitting back, rest, rest, resting in His presence and there'll be no problems, there'll be no trials, there'll be no worries. And Don't worry about it. Once you have begun your walk, God will carry you through. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And that's true, He won't. But you can leave and forsake Him. Amen. That doctrine of you know, a positive religion is one of the greatest lies Satan has come out of. The other lie is when... I'm actually get in trouble here, I know. Preacher, I know that I'm an alcoholic. I know I'm a drunk. I know I'm a drug addict. I know I am whatever I am. But I was saved when I was 10 years old, and I know I'm going to heaven. See, God doesn't look at my body. He looks at my spirit. He looks at my mind. He does not care what I do with His body. Yes, He does. One of the greatest lies, and I used to live, I used to, it was me. I was raised that way. Once in grace, so no, no man can pluck you out of God's hand, but you have the ability to walk away. Amen. Two of the greatest lies Amen. that's in the church today, there are many, many others, but the truth is that Jesus Christ came 
and gave his life for us so we could have life and more abundantly. Amen. This journey that we're on, this expedition we're on, is we begin to try to search out truth and try to find out what God wants us to do is something that we're fighting with on a daily basis. Yes, amen. We don't want to live a life that is just getting by, do we? We started this journey. There was a song that youngest used to sing when they was about Mateo's age now. I'm your age age. They always sang a cappella. And this is how we are today. When we come to this altar and give our life to Jesus, we start out to win this race. To serve the Lord and look upon His face. There to sing forever of His amazing grace. I want to tell you what, it's time to realize we're on a journey to see the face of Jesus. Yes, we're on a journey to come into His presence and love and have be loved and feel joy like we've never felt before. Amen. On this earth, we're going to have troubles on every hand. We're going to be overcomers, don't get me wrong. But you're going to have joy unspeakable and full of glory when you get to Jesus. I just jumped about three dollars off the head. But we started out on this journey to win the race. This expedition you're on, you want to find a truth finding mission. Amen. You start out walking. You don't know anything right now. But as you walk, you begin to realize there's something more to this than just salvation. There's something more to this, and I don't mean to say just in that such a fashion, but God has so much more for His children. Amen. Yes. So much untapped truth that we have yet to tap into. Amen. Salvation gets you to heaven. There's no doubt about that. I'm not, that's, not, that's, kind of, that's one of the, that is the greatest miracle that we have in this world today is salvation. But somebody can just come up and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm near the Savior. Would you be my Savior? I give my life to you. And with just that simple words, with not having to do anything else but accept the fact that He done the work, we're saved. He says, you say get saved. You don't want to just sit right there on the edge of the seat of the salvation. He said, I want you to come a little bit deeper into the Word with me. I want you to come just a little bit further than what you've been before. So you start out walking. You start saying, I don't know where I'm supposed to be going, so I'm walking by faith. That's right. Amen. I'm stepping out in faith. I don't know where I'm going, but God, you said to go, so I'm going. Yes. And we start walking in a faith pattern on this expedition that we're on. We start seeing things come around us, and we start seeing how the Word begins to speak out and say other things to us. As God has made promise after promise after promise to the church. So I want you to go out and preach the gospel to all nations. Who me? <laughs> yeah, you. But, but I'm, I'm, I'm right here. How do I do that? By faith. Amen. God will put people in your path. That you didn't know was going to be there. You might be at the hospital with somebody else and God put two more people in your path. Amen. That just happened. You might be in the grocery store and somebody's looking over you and all of a sudden they don't have, they see that they're about $5 short, they're able to buy what they want, and you give them that $5, she just become a missionary uh -huh. to that person. When you see the greatness and the grace of God begin to pour out of you as that faith, as you begin to go on this journey, you're on this expedition that God is love and you want to extend His love to all those that you meet. You don't want nobody left behind. Amen. So as you begin to walk on this expedition, all of a sudden you realize that I'm an emissary for God. I am here in His presence. I'm walking in a pathway that He wants me to walk. I'm not stepping to the right. I'm not stepping to the left. I'm going straight on the journey. I'm headed straight for when they headed out for the, for the pole, the North Pole, they didn't go by way of the South Pole. They didn't go by the way of the equator even. They went straight to the North Pole. God says, when you have a problem, I don't want you going around your left elbow to get to your right hand. I want you to come straight to me. Amen. Truth will set you free. As we begin to go on this, we begin to see a little bit further. We see how he says he's going to speak with other tongues. Now, as Pentecostals, we like to keep that in the 
in the realm of baptism the Holy Ghost speak with the tongues, the Spirit gives the utterance. And I'm going to tell you what, it's joy unspeakable when God's Holy Ghost comes to one. But also it goes a step further. You no longer talk like you used to talk. You no longer sit back and talk about how trash talk people. Gossip behind their back. You no longer sit back and think about ways to destroy somebody's life. But all of a sudden there's a change take place. As the love of God begins to flow through your mind, you're no longer thinking, that person there, preacher I know, Church of God preacher, not even I've seen him in many, many years, but he went over a message one time. A missionary came over from Somalia, I think it was. And they were going across the bridge, and that bridge had a catwalk where people could walk fence over with chain link fence all the way around it. It was like walking through a dome with chain link fence. Just to show you how old this one was, he said, and hey, this is the preacher's words, he said, there's a hippie walking up the catwalk. Long hair, tie dyed shirt, bearded, looked like he had had a bath in about six months. And the pastor looked at that missionary and said, I thought they should go get him a bath. And cleaned up. Sounds like something we'd say, don't it? The missionary looked over at him with people almost with tears in his eyes and said, No, brother, somebody's telling about Jesus. He said, I couldn't wait to get back to church to all the repent. It's a new tongue. We don't see the outside, we don't see the person that is sitting there, how they're dressed, how they look, how they think, how they say, but we see a soul that needs Jesus. When we started on the expedition here at this church, we started out saying we want the broken, we want the maimed, we want the hurting, we want those who are in bondage, we want to see some freedoms take place. And God has been sending us that time after time after time again, but this expedition that we're on is a truth expedition. It will eventually lead to a place of truth where we realize that we can't do it by ourselves. We've got to have help. So we're walking by faith. We don't understand where our next step's coming from. We don't understand where our next help is coming from. But God says we're walking by faith. Amen. We walk by faith for a while and we all of a sudden we turn back around and look and we say, look where I came from. Man, I was kind of a mean feller, but a mean lady. I didn't have too much hope. I was down in the ditches. I either had a a bottle in my hand. I had gone to other extremes. All those around me said, give up on him. All those that sit around me said, you'll, you'll never amount to anything. But right now, I can look back to where I was at. And I can see that from the time that I began my journey, when I accepted Jesus as Savior, I can see some of the times where I had to walk by faith. Because people were saying that to me. said, why don't you just give up? You ain't going to make it anyway. It's not in your pathway. It's not, that ain't you. That ain't what you are. And you look back and you begin to go through that as you had to walk by faith. Somebody had to hold your hand and carry you through some of those times that you were looked down upon and thought bad about. It. All of a sudden, you look back on that and all of a sudden, uh, something begins to hit you. And it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. Because you can't understand how a God could love somebody that's in that condition and bring you to the condition you're at right now and bring you look, look see you got further to go than what you've been, but look what he's brought you from and where he's on this expedition that God has got us on this journey. He keeps blessing and blessing and blessing. We keep saying, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy. He says, But I am. And I want to bless you. I want to give you something that you never had. I want you to understand how much truth there is in my life. He said, I want you to know that I'm going to give you power to tread on serpents. That's just take up, doesn't it? But that take up means to tread on. It means to walk on. So whatever that enemy is, you can walk on top of it. He's under your feet. You can't uh, keep, he can't come up and get you because he's under your feet. Whenever the enemy comes up and tries to rise up, just remind him he's under your feet because Jesus has put him under. You're treading on serpents. 
These people want to take them up and look at them. They lost their mind. I want them under my feet. I want to be walking over top of them. Spiritual demons that are trying to destroy everything that God has put in our lives. They're trying to raise up and bring you back down to the point you were at. They can put you back. We talked a few weeks back. We had a few people that came through here and God had brought them to a stage of... Uh, The drugs have been taken out for six months, eight years, something like that. She just had ten years clean, so I ain't talking about her. They came in here and we was talking about whenever they go back. It's hard to get them back again. Once they find the freedom for the drugs, the alcohol, the heroin, the pills, whatever it is, whatever they're on, once they find that freedom from that, and they feel that joy that they hadn't felt before without it. And they start walking, but something rises up and pulls them back. And we say that that is worse, harder to get them back out the second time than it is the first. Do you want to know why? Demons attach themselves to those drugs. And they will pull back, and he's done said the words that if you, if you knock him out, he's come back and say they're more worse than what he is. So the next time, it's that much more of a battle to bring that freedom again. But God said, I'm going to bring you freedom. Amen. We've got a truth version here going on. Now who is going to believe the report of God? They love man enough to send his son to die for them. Who is it? But he goes on a little bit further in that verse. And he said, to who shall the arm of the Lord be revealed. Amen. On this journey that you're on, that you're walking by faith, time and time again, as you look back, you say, man, I don't know how I got through that. I don't have that kind of strength in me. But God, somehow or another, reaches down. And he strengthens you. Who? And whom shall the arm of the Lord be revealed? And he just put about that arm back on the back of about one chapter here for just a second. As Isaiah was writing, he says, Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake as in ancient days, the generations of old. Thou art art. Art thou not it that had cut, that cut Rahab and wounded the dragon? Art, not, art thou not it which dried the sea and the waters of the great deep? That he that hath made the depth of the sea and the way over for the ransom yet to pass over? Strengthen our arm, God. Eyes of the Lord are to and fro over the whole earth trying to find somebody that he showed himself strong in. And the first thing that to be able to do to receive that strength is to believe the report. Amen. Step one. I've got to believe the report. I've got to know that I know that I know that report is true. And I'm living a life that says that report is true. And when I begin to know that, all of a sudden, God says, I want to use you. I want to take you to a place but you know you can't go. I want to take you into a journey that, and I'm going to have enough people around you to prove it. I just told you, Jackie's 10 years clean from meth, crack, whatever else it was involved in it. That's pretty much it. We've got Others that was addicted to alcohol. But now you have a witness that God can set you free. So on this expedition to find truth, God is showing Himself strong in ways where the 
Or whenever someone comes up and says, I just can't quit drinking. You say, Jesus help me, he can help you. I can't turn, I can't give up on this crack that I'm on. I just can't stop. It just draws me back. In Jesus' name, you can. I can't keep living the life, the promiscuous life I'm living. I can't keep, just can't stop doing what I'm doing and the things that I'm doing with the help of Jesus. You can't. It's an expedition of, he's searching, trying to find some sort he can show himself strong in. And if he shows you himself strong in you, he wants you to use that strength to help somebody else. When we go back and we begin to see things, and we always talk about the adrenaline rush whenever somebody is in hurt or in danger, how our strength multiplies, how we can lift. I've seen pictures of children lifting cars up off of parents. They blame that. They give that credit to the adrenaline rush, but it, that has part of it. But also, it's a higher power called Jesus that's given the strength to lift them up. And when He gives them that strength, that child can sit says, "I know I can get that car off, Mom. I feel it just coursing through my veins. I feel like I can just take that car up and throw it away, but I'm not going to do it." I know that that strength is bubbling within me. I know that the Holy Ghost is burning within me. I know if I lay hands on that person, they're going to be healed, but I'm not going to do it. I know that in the truth, that person that is, I see them right now, they've got a needle in their arm and they can't take it back out because they don't. I know that if I get a hold of them, they can take that needle away from them. That person that is broken right now because of a relationship, because they don't have a. They have, Three or four come through here recently with spousal abuse. And most of them are still living in it. Because they don't understand that God has a freedom for them. And God has a victory for them. So you, we have to be strong and hold them up in prayer and lift them up until they come to a place where God can lift them out of there. We can't just shove them off to one side. Say, so deal with it. You made your bed lie in it now. Countless people are broken and are hurting, and we've been on a journey. The truth is, there are many, I'm going to call them halfway houses, detox, detox units around the country. There are many, even Teen Challenge, David Wilkerson's. Is a drug rehabilitation place. He's one of the few that uses Jesus' name, though. He makes it, puts that in the forefront of it. But there are countless that are reaching and touching in those parts, and they're not really touching anything because they have no power. AA says you need to talk to your higher power. One man said his higher power was his. Uh, his ink pen in his pocket. That was his higher power he was praying to. It was something stupid like that. It wasn't the ink pen, but it was something stupid like that he carried in his pocket. So they did not point him to the one that could bring deliverance to them. We're on a journey for truth. Because as we just said a minute ago, the truth can set you free. The truth can break every bondage. The truth can take those chains that are holding us and keeping us from going any further than what we're going to go and break them away and bring, a, bring salvation into a life. But even further than that, the truth will set you free from your own limitations. If you're on this journey, you're walking by faith, take off the chain of what I can't do and put on the Holy Ghost garment of what He can do. And let Him use us in it. The truth will set you free from your limitations and your thoughts and your beliefs of what you can and can't do. Right, it's time for the truth to take a journey with us. Are you ready this morning? Amen. Truth. Not only free from sin, but free from our own thoughts, our own limitations. 
Can you see Joshua and Caleb as they stood up there and they quiet these two men? Joshua was kind of a young kid. He wasn't really that old yet. But these two men stood up and said, Hey, y'all, shut up. Listen to what we've got to say. We have went over there. We have seen it. We have documented it. We have brought it back in here. I want you to see the goodness of God. Look here. You see this? This is what God wants you to have. He doesn't want you starving. He wants you. He wants to bless you. Spiritually speaking, He does not want you to starve. He wants you full and overrunning. Let's go right now and take what God has promised us. God is truth. And if God is truth and God says we can have it, why don't we go get it? The reason for the expedition is so while everybody is there, all different people have different accounts. Part of the expedition, David's mom is eight years clean from cancer. Your sister's, as far as I'm concerned, free from cancer. Yeah. She's been delivered from it once already. God wants us to understand that it's not something that we're being held back by. Right. It's our own conception of who we think God is. Amen. And as we walk by faith, and we look back and we begin to realize what God has brought us from, where we're headed to, and where we can go to next. So he's promised us something happy. He's promised us a land. He's promised us a place where He could be with us and we could be with Him in His presence. This morning, as this expedition started a long time ago, I want you this morning to look back in time to the day you knelt in that altar. Can you see yourself there this morning? I'm not talking about Listen, I can go back to when I was 10 years old and I can still remember going to the altar and Pastor told me to, to memorize John 3.16 and Psalms 23. I can still remember going up into the, and that's hard for me to remember, trust me. My memory is not that good. Without a trigger of some sort, that's not that good. But I can remember going into the baptismal, they had it behind the pulpit and being baptized and I left there wet. I'll be honest. I can remember as I was a young man doing the things that I was doing and thought I was saved, thought I was good, thought everything was all right, but I can take you back to the place. It's been about 30 some years ago right now. We hadn't been married long. I don't know if you think you were still carrying Becky at the time, so it hadn't been very long. Walked into the Martha Hill Church of God, Mount Assembly. Lloyd Camp up there was the pastor. As he began to preach about David and Goliath, I think that ain't the what I heard. Man, then what kind of doctor are they trying to teach here at this church? We went out on the Curtis Creek. Had a, I think we had a family dinner or something that day, didn't we? I said over the whole time. I can't believe it made me feel better. That preacher didn't preach nothing the truth. <laughs> Only to have a few days later, or maybe a month or so later, to walk down that same aisle to the altar and give my life to Jesus Christ again 30 some years later. I found myself back in the water a few months, a few years after that. I was baptized again because I felt like it. We're still trying to get a baptism a bit down, but if the water's up and down and snakes is up and down, and we ain't going to go out there and buy snakes in the high water. I'm going to let you know I'm not a snake hammer. I don't want to be part of them. And I remember laying in our bed. One night, I think it was a Tuesday night, I'm not sure 
Like you go back to memory as far as that was. No, it wasn't a Sunday. No, it wasn't a Wednesday. Middle of the week type thing. And we were laying in that bed that night. As I pray, I've been seeking the Holy Ghost. I've been seeking for that breakthrough, that promise that He had made. And I was laying in that bed that night. When she got up to do something, I, was back there, I got back there by myself. And I was just laying there and the Holy Ghost began to speak for me. It wasn't lightning bolts or thunderstorm. It was just a, I'm here. And that began a journey of seeing souls healed. We've seen brain numbers taken out. We've seen cancers touched. We've seen people delivered from the bondage of sin and from everything else. And it's gone any through yet, is he? He's still searching. And I show myself strong through you today. And I show myself strong through you today. I'm going to put somebody in your path today that you haven't seen in 20 years. And they're going to need a special touch. Are you ready to tell them what God has to say? We're on a journey, church. The final destination is heaven. The rapture is fixing to take place. God's calling His church home. But until He comes, we've got to work. Until He comes, we're on this journey of truth to find the truth. Because until we realize the truth, we can't act upon it. Until we realize that He wants to lay His hand upon us, to lay our hand on somebody else, but he wants to use us as a vessel to bring healing into somebody else. You know, there's no greater joy in a minister's life when he sees that people come getting altar getting saved. But right there behind it is the same joy when that person comes in. They say, I'm bound by such and such, and I can't find peace. Young man has been through countless with uh, detox places. He couldn't find it. He went out and bought all the heroin he could buy. He got in his car and he drove. He filled up with gas and he drove a little bit more. He drove all the way from I think around Washington, D.C., all the way down to Florida. I 95 runs the whole quarter, so he went all the way down 95. His plan was to get as far away from home as he could, overdose on the heroin, and die. But he pulled off. Now, he had been to all the churches that where he was from, all the cathedrals. I mean, they had the 20-foot ceilings and the million-dollar chandeliers and all these things. And all the traps, all the tra trappings, but no power. He pulled off I-95 and started down a little side road. Got down there just a little ways and there was a little church. It was a gravel parking lot. He pulled up in there on this journey to find truth. He didn't know where he was going. He just had to go somewhere. He got out of the car. Just so happened that this was a work day at the church. Ladies was there in their cleaning rags, and the men was mowing grass, and the pastor was there. And he pulled up, and he said, uh, it, it, is, "Is this?" And I see the sign there. Is this really? Is this a church? It's a little shack on the side of the road. He said, "Yes, sir." He said, "He told him his story." You know what I love about this? They didn't say, okay, here's the phone number to King Challenge. Call them and see what they can do for you. He didn't say, here's the phone number for, I'll take you to the hospital and get you to the detox. You come to the right place. You come to the right place. He said, I right, people, quit your cleaning. Quit you mowing. God's fixing to do something. 
<laughs> this fellow here came all the way down here on a journey. And he needs deliverance. <laughs> they took him inside. They said, I don't know what happened. They got up there and all of a sudden I felt this big hand hit me on top of the head. They said, in the name of Jesus, the devil release him from the bondage that is going on in his life. Drugs, I come against you in the name of Jesus. The ladies got back up in the choir and started singing, there's power in the blood. They got singing, there's deliverance in Jesus. They got delivered walking by faith. They got singing songs of the grace and the power of God. And the whole place began to fill with the power of God. And all of a sudden, this man like said, just, just hit me and just knock me all the way back to the back room. I stood up. This, he, he told this story later. He said, I stood up. I ain't had a desire, one, for that heroin no more. You tell me that we as children of God on a journey of truth because He is showing Himself strong through us so we can show that same strength to the person that's bondage. He got up from that place and a few minutes later went back praying for Him again. He got up speaking with other tongues. The Spirit gave the others. Went back to where He came from. Put on a three-piece suit. Next time they seen Him, He was walking in the presence of those around Him and I want you to know I ain't the man I used to be. I've been set free from all the things that was around me. Because you see, I went on a journey. And I didn't know where that journey was going to take, but I found somebody that was already been on that journey. I found somebody that's willing that God showed himself strong through them. Amen. As we go through the journey that God sets us for, people are putting our path, we won't be able to reach out and touch their lives. Amen. This expedition got us on is something beyond our understanding. Are you ready? to take the authority over the enemy and put him under your feet. To lay hands on the sick and let them recover. Watch them recover. To seek God's grace. Lord, with you people, would you stand with me this morning? This, yeah. We have partaken of communion this morning. We have, Jesus said, I am the bread. He said, as long as you eat this reminder of the flesh that I have given you, the meat that I'm giving unto you. So I want you to understand that bread is just a symbol of me. You're partaking of my flesh. It's going inside of you. When it gets inside of you, it begins to break down. And it feeds the need of where it's at. It begins to bring nourishment to that weak point that is there as you eat my flesh. He says, my blood is drink indeed. As we drank the juice, symbolizing his blood, symbolizing life, symbolizing salvation, as we took and drank that juice. We're saying, God, not only do I want the strength that you can give me, but I want that inside of me so to the point I can stand up. As he rose out of the crowds, he said, I want you to go to Jerusalem to be interred with power from up on high. So John baptized you with water to repentance. But you will be baptized. You will be submerged. You will be surrounded by. You will be compassed by my spirit. Let me come in. Let me cover you inside, outside, and all around because it's a way of truth. This journey that we're on, this expedition that we're walking. I funded it. I've made a way for it. It's a free gift. Let me use you the way I want to use you. Does anybody understand my voice wants to be used by God in ways that you don't understand, that you know you can't do by yourself? I want you to need dollars. God wants to use you because you are somebody. He didn't call you out not to be used. Are you ready this morning for what God's fixing to do? You started out to win this race.
wants to understand something this morning. Three years ago when we came into this field, it was not on a lark, it was not on a whim, it was not on a planned recession. It was an expedition set forth by God. We have came into this place. Used to, they bailed into the bar over there. And they, some of y'all used to build it. I thought, oh, where you look, all that, yeah, that's where I was at. I used to build that bar. But now, we're drinking from a different fountain. That's right. No hangovers from this fountain. No after effects. No kidney failures. But God said, I sit here, I put you in here for a reason. I put a mismatch of people in this place for a reason. You're all taking records of what God has done. You're all reaching in places that you didn't understand. You didn't know that God had this going on. Four years ago, probably the church was in, especially here in town, was not anybody's even thought how it was. But God said, I put you on this journey for a reason. The people around here that need a mighty touch in my hand. He said, I'm going to put an anointing upon you that you don't can't earn it. You won't understand it. Someone will come up to you and all of a sudden, before you know it, you've got laying hands on your prayer and you're seeing things take place. There are going to be children come up to you. Some of them may even be black and blue for mom and for mom and daddy to be. You're going to have to tell them how much God loves them. And pray for the parents. There are going to be things that you don't, you can't even begin to dream what God is fixing to pour around you. So this morning I'm asking you to let that arm of the Lord show His strength in your life. Receive His touch. Receive His anointing. And speak boldly whenever He comes. Father, I come before you right now as these in this building this morning stand before you and stand before this altar. I'm asking you, Father, to search the hearts and the lives of those here this morning. God, search us, cleanse us, sanctify us, and set us apart for the journey you set us upon. Father, every step we make may be a step of faith, believing that you're going to bring it to pass. Father, people that you put in our pathway, I pray God deliverance would come with strength and an anointing. And God, those that come that are broken, give us the wisdom to speak your love and speak your anointing and speak your deliverance and speak your grace and tell them what God has brought us through. Father, this morning, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord, to touch every person here with a greater touch than they've ever felt before. Let your grace break through every bondage.